And good evening, boys and girls. It's Tuesday, the 27th of June 2017. A warm welcome along to a late night United Kingdom talk. I do hope you enjoy the new countdown, boys and girls. It's exactly the same length as the old one. Uh, that took about five hours to do that. So I did four hours, I think, on was it Saturday? I think, was it Saturday I did it? I think it was. I think I did four hours on Saturday morning. And the, the world thing, the globe thing at the end, I, but that, that's not made by me. I send it off and it gets made. And I've been waiting for that to arrive. So there we are. Five hours. That is the new counter. I think that's pretty impressive. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, boys and girls. Where's the time going? Look, Alan Russell says it's gone very quick this month. Huh? Gone very quick this year, love. Blimey. We are now closer to next Christmas than we are to the one that's gone. I said that the other day. But c can we just start off with a big warning, boys and girls? Do you buy prepackaged sandwiches? Very, very naughty. Do you know how many calories there are in a prepackaged sandwich? My friend Adam the Plumber informs me that if you're on Slimmer's World, you're going to have the entire day of sins in one pre-packaged sandwich. I mean, when you make it at home, there's not that much mayonnaise on there and all that stuff, is there? Dear me. Well, have you got Sainsbury's ones in the this morning? I'm very, very sorry to my Tory friends for starting off today with a news story from the dreaded Daily Mirror, dear. I must apologise, but the story, Sainsbury's pulls 13 sandwich filler products off the shelves after food bug Listeria is found. I always thought Listeria was, I don't know, a type of cheese or something like that. I don't know why. There's nothing, it, it doesn't sound like a bad word, does it? Not like, um, let me think of something like cancer. That's a horrible word, isn't it? Cancer or gonorrhea. That sounds just awful, doesn't it? Oh, of gonorrhea or what else can I think of? Tonsillitis. Sounds nasty, doesn't it? Listeria. That doesn't sound too bad, does it? <laughs> Is it just certain words that have a bad ring and listeria doesn't have one? Anyway, here's the story uh, from this morning Super Sorry Away Daily Mirror. Uh, Sainsbury's has pulled 13 own brand sandwich fillers off the shelf after food bug Listeria was found. The supermarket's own brand deli fillers, which cost, oh, I see, so it's not like the actual sandwiches, it says, uh, which cost £1.40 for 220 grams, uh, were withdrawn off or the two or the 220 gram ones for £2.10 uh, for, what was it, or 385 grams, were withdrawn after Listeria uh, was found in some of the products. Oh dear, including cheese and onion deli filler, coronation chicken deli filler, egg mayo deli filler, and tuna and sweet corn deli filler. You see, you should be making all this stuff yourselves now. I'm doing all my own cooking now, all my own cooking. By the way, you remember that rice I mentioned to you? I, I, I did far too much uh, rice risotto, uh, veg vegetable risotto uh, uh, last week which I then froze, but recently I've been reading that you really shouldn't reheat rose, uh, rice. I chucked it all away this morning. Chucked it all away. You know, for the sake of saving, I don't know, what, three quid on all that. It's just not worth the risk, is it? So I chucked it all away. Just in case you were worried and concerned. Sometimes people are worried and concerned. Doesn't happen very often, but occasionally they are worried and concerned. Well, if you were, I've chucked the rice away, so don't worry too much. Apparently, all these things have a use-by date of July the 4th. So there we are. Do be very careful if you've uh, got that. Apparently, this bug can cause flu-like symptoms, stomach cramps, sickness and diarrhoea. Anyone had, um, uh, anyone had uh, uh, food poisoning before? It's not nice. Do you remember having food poisoning? What gave you the food poisoning? Do you know? If you do know, you could call in on the show this afternoon. Go and force yourselves. Make a phone call. Who's had food poisoning before? I have. Phone number's up there on the screen. Lines are now open, boys and girls. 0208 144 200 operators are standing by in the room next door, waiting, waiting for your telephone call. 0208 144 
3477 is my local London number. If you've got Skype, you can Skype in as well if you want to. My Skype name is United Kingdom Talk. So either of those two things, okay? And thank you very much for those people that are sharing the video on their walls as well this morning. Thank you very much, or this evening. Um, the disease listeria, or the, the, the bug listeria, can be very serious for frail elderly people. Does, does that include me? Am I a frail elderly person? Not quite yet. Uh, young babies, pregnant mothers and their unborn child and those with weakened immune systems. Aha, they are dangerous for me. Uh, those who have bought it are urged not to eat the sandwich fillers, but return them and get a full refund. We want more from the refund, dear. Just a refund? Well, I'm sorry, dear. You're selling me poison in bottles which I have bought only to just about enter my mouth and I'm lucky enough to read it. And you just want to give me a refund? Pardon? I think you need to be sued, lovies. I want a refund plus 10 million nectar points. 10 million... Ne oh, do you know British Gas has stopped doing the nectar point things? There's a couple of people have stopped doing nectar points. There's another one as well. What was it? Home base. Home base. No longer accepted... Ooh. No longer accepting nectar points. Oh, I've got, oh, I've got a sticky nose again. This bit of my nose keeps getting stuck inside. Do you ever get that? <laughs> nectar points, yes. Anyway, um, if you've eaten this product and need further advice, please contact your healthcare professionals. So be very careful if you've bought any of those nasty fillers from Sainsbury's. Dear. That never happens at Waitrose. This sort of thing never happens at Waitrose, dear. It doesn't. I'm sorry. I don't remember ever seeing something having been recalled to Waitrose in my small, small few years so far on this large planet of ours, which is gradually being ruined. But we'll come to that later. Let's say hello to some of the people uh, with us today. Hello to Adam the Plumber, who is indeed with us today. Gustav says, evening, Butch. He loved the images of my flowers. Did you enjoy those? You'll see those every before every show for, for months now, I promise you, till I can be bothered to make another one. Uh, Rod is liking the new intro. Thank you very much, Rod. Alan Russell's there. Good morning, Alan. Nice to see you. Lou O'Keel, lovely flashbacks in the intro. We like a flashback now and again. We do like a flash or a flash mob. Ever seen a flash mob? There are loads of people that suddenly turn up somewhere and start, like, dancing or ha ha having an impromptu party for about ten minutes, and then it stops and they all just disperse. It's the weirdest thing ever. Flash mobs. Flash mobs. <laughs> Julian, hello, Julian, says, Are you a Game of Thrones fan? No, I've never seen that, Julian, I'm afraid. Never, ever seen that, my friend. No. I read out your little thing yesterday, my friend. All right. So I uh, don't know if anyone would be able to help you with that one. Uh, good evening to nephew Gary, but <laughs> Gary Butler, who's up late with the children tonight because the wife is uh, in hospital. Uh, Gary's uh, One of Gary's daughters is uh, severely, severely disabled. Her name's Olivia. And she's uh, got to have a, 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 a an operation on her airway. Uh, because it's floppy and she could suffocate. So she's got to have some sort of air operation on her airway. She's at the hospital at the moment with a sleep. Oh, no, what's it? What is it? He said it was. It was a sleep. It like it's like she's got all these things attached to her head and it's detecting how she sleeps and breathes. I think I think that's correct. So uh, that's why Gary's got the children at the moment. And if the wife is away, the children and the dad will play. And what how much more fun do dads have with their children than mothers? Mother said, oh, oh, be very careful. Oh, 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 don't, don't, don't do that. You're, oh, 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 you're making them too excited. Oh, 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 you know, don't, 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 don't do that. They might get hurt. Oh, or you might hurt their head on the sister ceiling. No, we don't worry about that. We just want to have fun. What was that film with Robin Williams? Oh, when he dressed as uh, uh, an elderly lady, didn't he? He had a big row with his wife. And uh, she said, I think she said, you can't see the children um, because uh, he was mad with the children. He was like one of them, as indeed I am. I think most dads are more like their children than, than, than grown up, don't you? Of course we don't want anything to happen to our children. But I think we are the fun people, not the mothers. A bit overprotective. Oh, 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 no, you can't do that. You might get hurt. Oh, don't be so boring, woman, dear. God's sake. So I think they're having a bit of a party today up in Lincolnshire with my nephew and his two children. 
Uh, egghead, I like to call him now. Um, let's have a look. Uh, <laughs> uh, greetings to Duke. Good evening, Duke. Hope you're well tonight. Joe is with us as well on a late night show. Hello, Joey. Mark is loving uh, the new intro video. Uh, I hope you do notice how the music and the pictures change at the same time. Five hours that took. Five hours. I'm sure I should have been a TV producer or something like that. Good evening to Rosemary. Greetings, Rosemary, who says, my God, I was awfully sick. Uh, a sandwich of a fast food truck. Couldn't even lift my head off the pillow. The bathroom was my best friend. And I bet it was both ends as well, wasn't it, Rosemary? Oh, Lord. Food poison is terrible. I, I got mine off beef burgers. What had happened? Years and years ago, what had happened, The I think the freezer had turned off or, or there'd been some sort of power cut or something else. Anyway, and then it came back on and um, I thought no more about it. And I had a couple of burgers. Uh, I was a meat eater at the time. This is a very, very long time ago now. Um, I had a couple of burgers and a few hours later it started. I was so ill, so ill from food poisoning. If you ever, if stuff ever thaws out, especially meat, especially meat, if it thaws out, do not ever refreeze it. Chuck it away. It's not worth saving that five, ten pounds. Oh, I've got to chuck it away. Well, it's just cost me ten pounds. Well, better you lose that ten pounds than end up in bed as sick as anything. And, of course, losing money from work then as well. So I know what you mean there. I remember once um, when I was working at a, a place in Camden called the Black Cap, again, about 20 years ago, and I came outside, and there used to be a, a hot dog man outside. This was a one one of my most favourite, probably part... It wasn't just a job, it was part of my life, this place. It was the Black Cap in Camden. And um, on a Monday night, uh, we were packed on a Monday night. I used to do a 70s and 80s night on a Monday. And um, afterwards, we'd come out and there'd be a man out there selling hot dogs. And I was going to buy one. And I, I'm so, oh, I love hot dog, please. And he's doing it and all that. And he's given it to me. I'm just about to take a bite of it. And it, and it, the, the, the bread was green, dear. It had mould growing on it. And I said to him, like, here, so dear, mate, this is green. He said, it can't be. I only bought them this morning. I thought, you lying old toll rag. <laughs> oh, no, nearly ate a green bun. And he goes to say, you know, you've got to be careful where you buy stuff from as well. I was working in a pub... Uh, about a year and a half ago, and it, it'd be a bit of a dodgy place, really. And a bloke would come in and sell meat, you know, from carrier bags. Anyone want to buy any of it? All nicked. Yeah, all stolen goods. Anyone want to buy bits of chicken there and steak? God, I mean, he had a load of it, all from the same shop. God knows how they nick from there. I mean, how do you nick from a shop like that? They've got all the little you know, bleeper things on there and stuff what sets off burglar alarms and all that, haven't they? Anyway, so he used to come in and people used to buy this stuff. Off. I watched it with my own eyes, buying this stuff. And I would go up to him. I said, are you seriously going to risk your health through that? Oh, well, it's all right. You know, it's all in date. How do you know that? He probably nicked it in the morning and the rest of the day it's been shoved in the back of a garage or something, you know, going off. It's so dangerous. Don't ever buy meat like that to save money or anything. Or even better, become a vegetarian like myself. Thank you very much. Uh, Alan says, my dad had a food poisoning a few months ago. He bought a field row from a petrol garage and found out the next day it was four days out of date when he found the wrapper in the bin. He was very ill for five days. Yes, I mean, those, to be honest, those sell-by dates, I, I do it by smell. Sometimes I might have stuff in the fridge, uh, but... I mean, it's it's never meat, you see. With me, it's never meat. So it might be a little packet of, you know, you know, you get the vegetables and you put a hole in the top, a little packet of vegetables, and you just put it in the microwave for four minutes. I buy, I, got, I used to buy quite a lot of those. And uh, if it was a couple of days out a day, I, I would make the hole bigger and puff it and, and smell it. And you can always tell if something's off like that. But meat, I think if, if I was eating meat, I think I would tend to throw it away once the use by date has gone there. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Alan, Mrs. Doubtfire. Thank you very much, Alan. That's right. It's Mrs. Doubtfire. It is indeed Mrs. Doubtfire. That's the one where Robin Williams dresses up and he has a lot of fun with his children. That would be, if, you know, that would be me as a dad, I think. Miss, Mr. Doubt, Mrs. Doubtfire. 
Possibly not in the ladies' outfit, though. I don't really do ladies' outfits, you know. <laughs> now, talking of food, there's a little article here that I found uh, a, a couple of weeks ago in the Daily Mirror. Uh, again, that's two stories in the Daily Mirror. What's going on with the show, dear? Uh, unfortunately, it won't scroll down. Why won't that scroll down? Oh, one moment, please. That's not scrolling down for me, so I can't read it out. It was a story... Oh, one minute, one minute. Oh, dear. Um, oh, there we go. Let's try and open it on another thing. One minute. <sighs> Daily Mirror. Is that working? Here we are. McDonald's staff reveal what you should never eat from a McDonald's. And this has come from McDonald's staff. Staff at the fast food chain have revealed what people should never, ever order. Now, I don't know if you go to McDonald's. Um, I, I, I'm very rare. I used I was going in a while ago for milkshakes. I had a bit of an addiction to vanilla milkshakes for some reason. But since I've been going to Slimmer's World, I've stopped all those. Slimmer's World story coming up soon, boys and girls. Don't worry. I have been this morning and I shall give you my results forthwith after this very important story about McDonald's. Staff at the fast food chain have revealed what people should never order, especially... If they want fresh food. So here we go. Here we go. Fish patties often sit for hours after being cooked before being ordered. This is in the Daily Mirror I'm quoting from here, OK? One worker said that the fish sandwiches sat in a dirty cupboard and were only cooked for a few seconds before being served. The Hertfordshire Mercury reported. Workers also advise McDonald's food lovers to never order food after 11 o'clock at night as colleagues were more, more prone <laughs> were more prone to drop ingredients on the floor and fail to wash their hands after using the bathroom. Oh, dirty people, dear. Dirty people. Not using the... Oh, no, no, no. The fast food secrets were revealed on the social media site Reddit after one user left a question asking workers to advise on which foods to avoid in the chain. Thousands replied to the question, detailing a number of horrifying stories from behind the scenes. The anonymous user asked, fast food workers, what should we never order from you? One person uh, replied saying, I used to work at McDonald's. Don't order our fish patties, OK? Uh, no one ever does, and I swear some days we make a batch and it would sit there all day and some, until someone ordered some. So I don't know what if I mean, they must sell some of them, mustn't they? Otherwise, they wouldn't be on the menu. Another user agreed and said fish fillet from McDonald's. I've seen those things sit there for hours before getting served. Yet it was not just these two users who said McDonald's fish fillet is something we shouldn't be ordering. My McDonald's um, uh, kept the fish sandwiches in a super dirty cupboard. <laughs> I mean, it's not good, is it really? So apparently don't order the fish at McDonald's. Subway and KFC have also been approached for comments. <laughs> oh, dear. Is there stuff that you don't or do you go to McDonald's much at all? Is that your sort of thing, McDonald's? I mean, it, it's never been mine, really. Not not at all. Even in my young years, when McDonald's first came over into this country, uh, we just had a few up and down. Now and again, we would go. We would go now and again, but certainly not as like a, a meal. We always looked at McDonald's as sort of snacks and things like that, you know. Might pop into McDonald's, might have a little, some chip, a burger with the chips. But it wouldn't be classed as a meal. I'm just surprised how, how that's changed and entire families traipse into McDonald's now on a Sunday for their Sunday dinner. Uh, I, I, I just don't get that. I really don't get that at all. Um, Rosemary said, it's funny you talk about McDonald's. I can't eat their food or the bathroom. Eh? I can't eat their food or the bathroom I go. Oh, really? What? Really? Oh, isn't that so? I can eat Wendy's, but not McDonald's. Now, I, we don't have a... I think we have any Wendy's here at all anymore, Rosemary. There used to be one in... Piccadilly, years and years ago, but it's all gone now. When I've been to the States, I have been to Wendy's. Um, I don't know if they... Do they do a veggie burger in Wendy's now? I've had the veggie burger in McDonald's, and that's just not nice. It's, it don't, don't taste nice at all, really. So I don't eat that. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, oh, hello to George Brown. That's my nephew's friend. George is a... Greetings, George. George is a football hooligan as well, boys and girls. We have football hooligans now tuning in regularly to this programme. So welcome along. Julian says, thanks for that, Chris. No responses. Ah, well. Uh, sorry about that, but... Um, yes. Never mind. Never mind. All righty. So let me tell you how I've been doing today then, after that very important McDonald's story. Uh, I nearly lost a hanging basket this morning. I was very distraught when I looked out and one of my hanging baskets was drooping like that, where it had run out of water. Now, I'm fully aware at the moment it's pouring down with rain outside. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, I do like to hear rain tip tapping away on the window, don't you? Tap, 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 tap. It's almost a good idea, perhaps, to get a purchase an extra piece of glass and put it flat so the rain will always land even louder on it. That would be quite a pleasant experience. I've got an app on my phone, actually, right? Because quite often when I go away on holiday, have I, have I, oh, don't say I've taken it off, have I? Just a minute. Oh, there is. Quite often when I go on holiday, or oh, you might get a funny phone noise, you know, do, 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 when I do this. Uh, I have trouble sleeping, so I've got this this rain app. Well, what's it called? Uh, well, I'm, yeah, but have a listen. Have a listen. Listen. Is that nice? Do you like that? That's rain against windows. What else have we got here? We got heavy torrential downpour. Yep, heavy torrential downpour. Um, with trickling puddles. Can you hear that? Oh, it's lovely. Do like the noise of rain. Rain onto a car roof. That's what it sounds like on a caravan roof. Oh, I tell you what, that's lovely. Oh, when you're in a caravan and it starts raining, that is really, really nice. Let me just turn my air conditioning down a little bit. It's a bit cold, getting a bit cold in here now. But yeah, when you're in bed, you know, middle of the night, it starts pouring down with rain. I have yet, although when you're in a caravan, it gets windy, it does rock from side to side. Unfortunately, that's the only time the caravan does rock for me, but there we are. Uh, so that app, if you want to get that, it's free of charge. It's called Rain Free. Can you see that or is it a bit... No, you can't really see it there. Rain Free, it's called. OK, there you are. Chris Reardon, helping you to sleep. I'm so kind. Uh, Rosemary says, we've just had a rain, uh, a thunderstorm. My poor dog is so afraid. Pets don't like that thunder, do they? No, and Guy Fawkes Night. They really don't like Guy Fawkes Night. Rosemary says, uh, Wendy's meat is fresh. They get meat every three days where McDonald's is frozen. Well, I mean, it's like all all frozen frozen meat. Hey, you have no idea how long that stuff's been there. Even when you go into the supermarket, you think you're buying a bit of fresh. That's probably been frozen and thawed out about 10 times, I would imagine. Awful. Anyway, so I nearly lost a hanging basket this morning. And then the mad cat lady came round. Do you remember I told you? I was having my Katie the cat groomed. She was being, not like that, groomed as in brushed. Not groomed by some old pervert. <laughs> groomed by a mad cat lady, so she knocked on the door. <clears throat> and when I opened the door, there she was. She had she brought her own table with her. And um, she got to work on Katie, and she, she had a couple of different brushes and stuff like that. She had a Ferminator. I like that word. Don't you like that? A ferminator, which appears to be some sort of brush with like a blade in it. And as she brushes the cat, it takes some of the fur off. So she'd done all that. Now, when she came, it was a sunny day. It was quite nice outside. I said, do you want to set up in the garden? She said, oh, I'd rather do it inside. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get blooming fur everywhere here. Yeah? <clears throat> so she's doing her work, and as she's doing this, the fur is just dropping off everywhere in my blooming kitchen, dear. I'm running around with my little handheld Dyson thing while she's doing this fur. Because the cat, my cat, Katie the cat, noise doesn't worry her anymore. You know, you could if, if she's sitting in the garden, you can literally mow around her and she won't move. She's not bothered. Not bothered at all by the, uh, by the lawnmower. Anyway, so she's doing this. You know, I thought, well, I can't say anything to her. Why didn't she just set up in the garden? Then the fur could have just dropped on the garden and tumbleweeded away. Or is that a word? Tumbleweeded away? You know, balls of fur going across the gardens of Royal Berkshire. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Oh, dear. 
So uh, she did that. And then she was she cut her claws for me. Now, I assisted in holding the cat down. By now, the cat is quite angry. She's really pissed off. Yeah, yeah. And I'm holding her like that. And then she's got a bite of my finger. And let me tell you, it didn't half hurt. My God. my She didn't draw blood. But the, my finger really hurt after she bit it. Evil. Evil cat. And you're only trying to make her feel good. That's all we're doing it for. Anyway, so it carried on and she done the nails. And then she gave her like a, a, a dry shampoo, which is like a foam stuff. That she puts on her and then brushes her through again. And really, that was about it. 40 quid for that. Um, and the, the lady went away. Oh, she didn't have to talk a lot. Talk and talk and talk. And she did her job and, and all that. Um... I don't think I'd have her back. I don't know. I mean, for 40 quid for what she did, I thought, to be honest, I could have quite done that myself, really. I mean, she goes to the vet every three or four months now, so that they, she has her claws cut there. The actual Therminator thing, well, I didn't see much fur come out. I saw a bit, you know, there were... There were balls of fur on the floor and things like that, and but it, there, there's no matted fur because I've got a brush that I use, although she doesn't like being brushed um, with that brush. Now, the brush the woman had, I think it was called Mickey, a Mickey brush. She seemed to be OK with that, so I might order one of those on Amazon. I think they were about 10 quid and get her a little brush there. So that was the mad cat lady who came this morning. Have you ever had your pet groomed? How did it go for you? Any pet grooming going on there? This woman, she says she does cats and dogs. Um, but have you ever had your cat, like, professionally groomed? Does £40 sound a lot of money? She was about half hour altogether, really, I think. Simon, hello, Simon, who says, we've had rain all day, thunderstorms as well as neighbours started moaning at us for moving stuff because he got knocked over in a wind. Oh, don't they moan, dear? They moan and they moan and they moan. Why do people moan so much, Simon? You never hear me moan. I'll tell you, we saw a moaner this morning on the telly or this afternoon. Oh, Nicola Sturgeon, and she's on and on. Will someone, will my friends in Scotland, please make sure whatever you do, whatever next election, vote her out. For God's sake, I'm sick to death of her. All she does is moan and moan and moan. Don't she? So now they've decided not to have the referendum. Uh, uh, referendum. Oh, you've been listening to people until 2021. So they've moved it back, but she still wants one. They've just, she's just lost a load of seats. Are they deaf? Are these people deaf? Nicola Sturgeon can, must be, she must be deaf. That's all I can hear. But she, she's moaning again on the telly this afternoon. And honestly, she, when I see her on there, I just want her to disappear from, from life itself. I really do. She gets, she, the, the, the hairs on my neck stand up whenever I see her now. She just gets on my, right on my wick. She really does that woman. Um, Julian says, my in-laws... In Cordoba, do not understand why I don't eat seafood because they all, all eat all the crap we put in the sea. That's right. They are bottom feeders. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. And if you get food poisoning from um, from from fish, that's that's the worst one, isn't it? Food poisoning from fish. Oh, and all that sewage goes out in it and then they eat it and then you eat them. I mean, it's just a recipe for disaster, really, isn't it? Rosemary said, my dog goes to the doggy spa every month. Oh, does it really? I think it's a different thing for dogs. Dogs actually really seem to enjoy having baths and brushes and lots of cuddles. Cats are, oh, will you leave me alone? Oh, please, please don't brush me. I don't want to be brushed or cleaned. But you have to do it when they're older. Mine's 18. She, she don't do it herself. But you've got to do your own cats. Rosemary said, my dog goes to the doggy spa every month. He loves going. There you are. Gets a bath, his nails trimmed, brushes his teeth, brushed ears, cleaned, cost me £61. <laughs> and they're so kind with him. Uh, Fred loves them. Yes, I'm sure, I'm sure they are. Dogs do like that sort of attention, though, don't they, don't you think? Hmm? All right, so um, after the uh, lady come and done me cat, I went to Slimming World. Now, I took the car. Usually, I'll cycle. 
And it's about a 25 minute cycle from my house to Slimmer's World. Um, but today I took the car because they had rain forecast. So the rain was going to kind of come at one o'clock. And it's not until one o'clock we come out of Slimming World. So I thought, I don't want to get caught on the way back in the rain. And also, I was having my hair cut as well. Um, so I, uh, uh, so I, I, I took the car to Wokenham, uh, parked up. I usually park in the church car park. If you don't park there, you generally got to pay for someone. But I found somewhere on the road to park. So I parked on the road and then I walked through this road, uh, which is called Sturgis Road in Wokingham. And it's a lovely road, lovely houses, all different. Not like these new modern houses. You know, you get, I, and I hate them. I, I like Barrett Homes or Wimpy or someone like that, where you go into this like development and every single house looks the same. I think that looks ghastly. It really does. I do like a road where all the houses are different. Why do they make them all the same? Like they're just ugly, ugly. New homes are ugly. Although it has to be said, people like them. My nephew and his wife, and indeed my niece and her husband, they've both got brand new homes and they like them. To me, the rooms are very small. The gardens are like postage stamps. You know, my gardens, I suppose oof, it must be eight times the size of my nephew's. And similarly, my sister's house, um, her garden, although they sold her, she had a massive garden once, my sister. But they sold half of it. They sold half of the garden and someone put a bungalow on it. But she's still got a very, very big garden, my sister. But not in, in comparison to the little, to the new houses, I just don't like them at all, modern houses. Maybe it's it's an age thing, perhaps, that the young people like those and um, uh, the older people don't. I don't know. Uh, so I went uh, walking down this road from my car. And I, it struck me to how beautiful some of the flowers were along here you know, roses and hollyhocks to die for. These hollyhocks are like up here and the, the, some of the flowers are really massive. Now I've got a couple of hollyhocks in my garden. They're nowhere near that big. I don't know why I'm not getting many flowers in my garden this year. Now I got to Slimming World and um, there was a long queue to get weighed today. So I, I, I got in the queue there. I was talking to, to another lady about the garden. that I said, I don't seem to have many flowers. She said, well, are you fertilising them? And I'm like, well, no. She said, well, try some of that. I said, well, I've got that. Um, she, sa she says, that, especially with your roses. Do you, get, do you have roses? I said, well, yeah, but I only get a couple of flowers on there. And when they do flower, they're beautiful. But not many, you know, maybe two, three, four flowers. Whereas I'm walking along this road, you know, entire walls are covered in rose flowers and massive hollyhocks. She said, try some fertiliser. And I remembered I've got that grow more stuff, which you um, attach to the end of a hose, you see. And then you put it on and, 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 and you fill this little plastic jar thing with, with the blue powder. And then you just literally spray it on your plants. And that's that's how that one works. So I might give that a go. Obviously not tonight because it's pouring down with rain anyway. But next time I go out in the garden and it's been a bit dry and I go to water it, I might have, I might have a go at that. Give that a go. Um, uh, <laughs> that's, that's my nephew, Jimmy Butler. He's the one that fixes the cars. Telling everyone to go to bed. Look, Simon, Simon says, I love walking through a countryside. Which houses are different? I show three houses joined together. Uh, I, I don't like well, when all the houses look the same. I just it's not for me at all. Julian says, our cat is feral rescued. You only touch her when she's in the mood. Oh, it's a bit, bit, bit like that, is it? Oh, oh, no, we don't want any of that. Hello, Barbie. Greetings, Barbie. Welcome to the show. Uh, hello to Guy. Guy's with us today. Hello, Guy. Guy is a Labour Party activist. A Labour Party activist. And he is busy at the moment. He's in his back garden planting money trees for Jeremy Corbyn to spend when he gets into power, which I'm telling you, that will be next. I'm telling you now, if there's an election this year, Mr. Mr. Corbyn will get into power. I know he will. And then we'll all sit here crying. Well, you won't, will you? For the many, not the few. <laughs> Simon says we had a fish pond, but all the fish died because of seagulls. So we filled it in bricks and dirt. And we're going to make it into a sitting area and flowers that smells nice. Oh, no, no. No, you've got to have... Oh, I don't know, flowers. Well, maybe so. Flowers are all right. I like flowers. Guys in Brussels at the moment. Oh, what are you doing in Brussels? There can't be much there doing, is there? 
What happens in Brussels? Nothing. Nothing happens in Brussels, does it? Anyway, so in the queue at Slimming World, <coughs> I give them my card and up, up on the scale to go. Uh, so I've got up on the scales, secretly hoping to have lost two pounds this week. Da, 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 da. Oh, no, I've gained a pound. <laughs> I've gained a pound this week. Terrible. I was in pieces. I started shouting. I had to call an ambulance and people to pin me down on the floor. I'd love someone to pin me down on the floor. But no, no, I, I had to, to help me. I, I, I was having a mental breakdown as I fell onto the floor from the scales. I've put on a pound. The strange thing is I don't know why. Now, since starting Slimming World, it was going down three and a half pounds, two pounds, three and a half pounds. So it's nine pounds altogether. Okay. Now, I've only lost eight pounds because I've gained a pound. However, I've still lost eight pounds. The lady doing the scale, uh, doing the scaling, doing the, uh, doing the weigh-in, she said this is quite normal. She said it's quite normal. You can suddenly put on a little bit as your body is adjusting to the different things that you're now eating. So I'm hoping that's what it is. And fingers crossed again for next week. So very, very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. It really is. Hello to Peter Hyde, who's joining us as well tonight. Has anyone done Slimmer's World? Anyone done Slimmer's World or anything like that? Call in 020-8144-3477 about anything at all, anything we're chatting about or anything else today you can talk about tonight. Okay? We are not time restricted. Excuse me. I've got hiccups. Time restricted. 020-8144-3477 <laughs> is my local London number. Or you can Skype in. Now, Skype username is United. Kingdom Talk. Okay, Skype username United Kingdom Talk. Phone number 0208144377. So, uh, yes, there we are. So that's it, really. That's 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 my that's my Slimmer's World disappointing story for you this week. There was me hoping to have lost another two pounds. Never mind. We'll try again next week. So what was the cause of that? Well, as I say, the lady did say um, that this does happen. It's quite a normal thing to happen. And actually, over the... I've only been going... This would be the fourth week, I think. Over the four weeks... Um, over the four weeks that I've been going, there's always been someone, and they're, they're like, you know... And, and she goes around the list, and, hello, Joan... And this week you've you've gained half a pound. And they're like, whoa, I don't know how that's happened. I've stuck to the plan. And then the next week they lose two pounds again. So we'll see what happens next week, all right? Fingers crossed. And if it doesn't work next week, then I'm afraid I'm going to go and buy cheese and onion crisps. I'm sorry, I'm desperate for a bag of cheese and onion crisps. All right. Um, we had uh, an email rushed into the programme, boys and girls. An email, at, well, a Facebook message had rushed in. OK, let me read you this Facebook message from the lovely Wendy, who writes, Good morning, Chris. Just doing a catch up on some of your shows over the weekend, starting with Saturdays. I loved your school rugby story. I had a school rugby story I read out on Saturday's show. Did you miss it? Then go backwards and have a little listen. I'm not reading it all out again, dear. I've told you time and time again, haven't I? Told you time and time again. If you don't watch all the shows, then you miss something all the time. That's how it is. Right. Um, I can just imagine you taking off, as in as in running, not taking something off. Oh, hang on, we've got a phone call coming in just a moment. Oh, is that you, Ronnie? Is that you, Ronnie? Is that the Chris Reardon show? This oh, is my hi. first time call. Oh, thanks I'm for very calling. Nervous. It's my best friend, Ron. How are you? Where are you at the moment? Would you I'm, like to tell us? Which, I am... Which in, wonderful... I'm in, I'm in, Sp I'm in Spain. Which wonderful part of Spain, which tiny little fishing village or nice place by the seaside, whereabouts are you in Spain, lovey? We are in a fishing village called Tohamilihano. Called what? Is that, that sounds Greek. To, that sounded Turkish to me. Yeah, no, no, that's how they pronounce it. Tohamilihanos. You mean Torimilinos? Oh, my uh, God. Well, Oh, how Maybe awful. The way that you English say I mean, it, it just... We Spanish say it. What do you mean, we Spanish? Have you changed nationalities or something? 
I have, yes. I now have a Spanish Shield passport. <laughs> Oh, my word. Well, I'm sure well, you're having a nice time online. there. Are you at a club or something? We are. We're in Aqua. And what's that like? Kareem, I'm just on the I'm just on the call at the moment, Kareem. If you uh, call back when I finish talking to Ronnie, then I'll be happy to take your call. I can only take one call yes, at a Kareem. time. Yes, right? Kareem. Hey? Kareem, go make yourself a cup of tea. Who's making yourself a cup of tea? Thank you. Sorry? Kareem. No, First Kareem. Of tea, my friend in Hammersmith, Kareem, is trying to call. Yeah, we're just having we're just having a few little drinks and it's twenty six degrees. It's ten to one in the morning. It's lovely. It's very nice. Yes. And we're just chilling around a table, having a few drinks and a chat and a laugh and a joke. You're sounding a little bit incoherent tonight. Have you had a couple of drinks I, um, tonight? I might have had a couple of little drinks. Oh dear, dear dear me. Oh yeah, well, just a couple. Enjoy your holiday. Well. I'm just ringing to say hello, and I hope you're well, and I hope you miss me. Of and course. I'll be looking forward to seeing you when I get back with your gifts. Is that on Thursday? Gifts with an S. Is that Thursday or Friday? Thursday. Thursday. Is that Thursday? Thursday. Oh, yes, I'm off Thursday, aren't I? Of course I am. Yeah, Thursday evening. Okay. And that is gifts with a plural S. Okay. Well, enjoy the rest of your Thank holiday. You. Routine. Cheerio now. Do, do say hello to your four listeners. For There's me. millions of people today. Goodbye, dear. Thank millions you. and bye millions bye, of lovely. people. And do be careful not to get sunburned, OK? I'm not. I'm brown. Good. Cheerio. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. There we are. Ronnie calling it Tori Molinos. Cool, dear. How it goes down, and it? Tori Molinos of all places. Right, a line's become available now. There we go. Hello, who's calling in now, please? Hi, Chris, it's Pete, Pete Hydes. Hello, Peter, how are you, sir? Not bad, thank you. How, how is you? life in your slow... In your, how is life in your part of the world? Good, wet, it's very wet down here, all right? Where are you again? Yeah, in, Ch in Chesham, Hertfordshire. Oh, Hertfordshire. Yeah, my, my friend yeah. loans, uh, he uh, runs a place in Hemel Hempstead, uh, the Steam Coach. Oh, right, OK. I thought, what's the area called? Boxmore. It's, it's, it's a nice place down there. I never forget the first time I had a sat nav and um, the the travel from here to there with no traffic is about 45 minutes. And it ended up oh. being two hours. This sat nav was going down all these, I have to say, beautiful little tiny roads. And it's the sort of thing mm. you, you kind of don't expect it to be in Hertfordshire. You The sort of roads that you would expect, you know, in, in the... Um, in Wales or somewhere like that, you know, yeah. small roads. But it's a big area, isn't it, Hertfordshire, really? Yeah, they do exist there, don't they? Mm, mm, absolutely. Well, I, just, I, I, I find the wrong numbers just now. Can you imagine? Uh, you just did, ringing did and you? ringing, and the lady answers. Goes, hello. Oh, I'm hello. Like, did you think it was one of my many operators? Yes. You want <laughs> your, <laughs> your switchboard? Hi, Pete. It's Christmas. <laughs> oh no. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up there to anyway, are. Peter? You ever had food poisoning? Uh, I beg your pardon? Ever had food poisoning? Yes, once, and I'd never like it again. It was just horrible. How long ago was that? About three years ago. I went to I went to a cafe and I ordered myself a tuna salad sandwich. Right. Sat down on the grass, ate it in the sunshine, lovely. Four hours later, oh my God, was I right. ill. Yeah, it's quite quick, isn't it? I think it's yeah. three, three or four hours. I, I'm sure someone told me, uh, who was it now? Uh, a guy called uh, Robbie, it was. I used to work for him at Belushi's. I worked for him in oh, right. various places, uh, Rob Jones. And he said, you can with, with food poison, you can almost set your watch by it. I think it's either three or four yeah. hours, something like that. Yeah. And bang I, on then, the, the problem starts. Oh, just, uh, Did you have it for very long? Well, I went to the doctors the next morning and I, I could hardly drive. I was that ill. I felt absolutely terrible. I've never felt so ill in my life. Awful. It was horrible, horrible, Awful. horrible. Feeling. It's just not worth yeah. the risk. As I say, I got it from the frozen burgers once. Uh, they'd refreezed when my fridge had gone oh. off and uh, it's not worth saving that. I mean, it was like, you know, the rice. I don't know if he was with us at the beginning of the show today, um, but um, I, I made some vegetable risotto rice 
uh, last mm. week, and I made far too far too much of it, far too much. Anyway, so I thought I'd freeze some of it, so I waited for it to cool down, you know, a few hours. Then I put it in the thing and shoved it in the freezer. Well, over over the next few days, I kept reading stuff about how you should never reheat Reese rice. Reheat Reese? <laughs> reheat, reheat you rice. Can, you, you, you can reheat it. I used to um, have a cap, and you can reheat it, but the best... You have to what they call rapid cool rice. So if you're going to cook rice and freeze it or keep it, the best thing is like get some greaseproof paper and just spread it out over greaseproof paper, and that will cool down within a few minutes. Uh, you've got to cool it quickly. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, like, it's I called read rapid that. cooling. Well, mm. this this would have been sitting in the pot for four, five, six hours. You oh, see. Oh no, 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 no. So no, uh, no, and I then froze it. Well, this morning yeah. I took it out of the freezer and I thought, well, I'll just leave it in the garden. It defrosted and then I threw it away. I thought, but better safe for the sake of you know four quid. It's just not worth, oh, worth yeah. the risk, is it? Yeah. Rice multiplies rapidly with bacteria, especially in our ambient temperature. It's the yeah. worst thing. I mean, you know, obviously when we had a when we had the calf, you know, it was one of the worst things, and you've got to really be on the ball with your rice. Right. And when well, you heat it, you've got to make sure it's heated right the way through. Where was your calf? Uh, that was in Chesnut as well. Oh, was it? Uh, mm. Did you? Why did you give it up? Did you? Did you um, retire? Well, I've, I've still. Uh, long story, Chris. I still have it to a degree. But, All right, um, go on then. Else, yeah. Someone else is running it at the moment. But um, yeah, it was uh, food is uh, very important. But like I say rice was the main one. Always is in any any shop. Right. Uh, how did you get into to, to running a calf? Did you? Is it just something that well, you decided it, to no, suddenly my, do? No, my or? partner, um, my ex partner, she was a um, a chef. Yeah. And uh, when I when I got with her, we decided. And my sister was uh, out of work at the time, so between the three of us, I decided to do the renovation work. Right. And my ex partner was going to be the chef, and my sister was going to help run it. And then it sort of went from there. Really, a lot okay. of hard work. Would never do it again. It's a bit of a learning curve, isn't it? What with all the licenses and all that business as well. And it's not just that; it's, it's, it literally is nearly a twenty-four-hour job. There's so much to do. Mm. You know, every day there's cleaning, and you've got deep clean once a week, and you've got to get your stuff every night, and your fresh produce. It's non-stop, Chris. Long days. Honestly. Yeah, long days. You know, and just like I say, it's, it's very hard work. Right. Can be very lucrative. It can be very lucrative, but it's very much hard work. Well, you've got to work for your money. Not yeah. like me, I just push a few buttons, don't I? Well, you do, yeah, we know that. <laughs> we know that. Today I'm going to earn £50, we're going to push that button, there we are. <laughs> you still got your arm in the calf now, what else do you do? Um, well, I'm a heating engineer by trade. Oh, right, OK. Yeah, I'm a heating engineer, so obviously I'm doing heating and plumbing. I've been doing renovation work for the last sort of five years. Boilers and all that business. Do you do those heat pumps? These they I keep getting emails Airtel about heat these pumps. heat pumps. Yeah, are they becoming popular yeah. at all? Yeah, I mean they started about ten years ago with all this uh, environmental um, stuff. I went over to um, to Switzerland to do a course on them. All right, yeah. they are good, but the thing is, what it is, it's the, the the output. They haven't quite got enough output on them. Right. You know, to, but so you have to have them on constantly. But yes, they I are know. very they are very economical, but like I say, it's a big upheaval to change from, you know, a wet system to a, you know an air source heat pump or a wet source heat pump. There's different. There's different. Basically, they're like a glorified fridge, if you like, or glorified air conditioning unit. Right. Well, Your I've... air conditioning unit is technically an air source heat pump. Oh, is that what I've got on my wall? I've got a. Do you do at air conditioning? Do you do the those box at the back? Yeah. Is, is an air source. So what it does, it runs, it sucks air through the unit, and what that does, that boils the gas. You know the refrigerant gas that's yes, put yes. inside it? That boils it, and then it goes through it like a heat exchanger. Ah. Oh. And it produces heat when you want the heat, or if you want to cool. That's right. I can, I can get this to heat up. I've got... Um, yeah. So is this actually an, a, an air source heat pump that I've got here, then, is it now as well? Well, ba basically, that's what they are. It's though, an LG. You know, I've got an LG. It's an LG. Quite a new yeah, thing. Yeah, I remember you saw, I saw you. I remember you saying you haven't put in. Yeah, they're good. The LGs are good. Is it cheaper for me? My... Is it cheaper for me to have that on than the, than the boiler? Then um, you have to have a look at the input. So if you look at the input on it, because you're going to have an input and an output. So oh, the input I? might be 1.4 kilowatts, and it give you like maybe seven kilowatts output. Has it got it written on the side? Is it going to on look? the side on the data badge? Should I have, have it look? written on it. Yeah, let's it, go and have a look. Tell you then. what. Um... I'll see if I can see it. Hang on a minute. I've got the shorts on here. I'm... Oh dear. 
Oh no, I can't see. Oh, hang on. 1.350 watts. What so input? Is that the input? Well, it should say input, and then it's like, oh, that's probably the input of the I, food. I, you know, I can't get up to see it. My eyes aren't yeah. enough to see that small right, and even with the have, glasses on. You have to check, and then, because look, if you're just in that room, yeah. there's no point in having your central heating on. No, that's right, yeah, room. yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they've got inverters, so they are quite economical. Oh, OK. Well, I was very pleased with this he put in. It cost me about 1200 to have this put in, which was actually less... Then when I had the, excellent. yeah, when I had it first, because it was a replacement for another one, you see. Uh, that was oh, there right. 12 years ago. And this was mm. actually less than what I paid for it 12 years ago. But I gather, you know, that's just how things are. Technology yeah. moves on and all that well, business. I've got a Fujitsu one. Oh, yes, yes, I know that. But that's been in there about 10 years now. But see, the input on that is like two and a half kilowatts. So it's like having yeah. a, a kettle on all the time. I was surprised at the... Um, uh, all the work that the men did, actually, when they both came round. There was a, a machine. I think he put the pipes in, and then he attached some machine to it. It was zzz, 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 like that. with a yeah, That's a vacuum pump. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And he said it was sucking out all the air and moisture. Yeah. And yeah. I said to him, uh, because when, when they gave me the quote, you know, the first thing I do is immediately check on the, like, a DIY type thing. And yeah. the quote for this unit was roughly the same price as what I would have paid to get one off Amazon or something like that. Well, yeah. Um, plus, of course, 500 quid for the two blokes, which sounded a fair amount. That sounded fair to me. That sounded fair to me. Um, and um, uh, I said to the bloke, I said, well, you've got all this stuff attached to it, you know, sucking out the moisture. I said... So how do they do that with those DIY ones you can buy? He said, well, they don't, but, so they break down. Oh, well, no, because the, the DIY, DIY ones are plug and play. So they're already pre-gassed, right. and all the pipe work is all gas. And all it is is like a, a plug-in connection. So as soon as you plug it in, yep. then it becomes a, you know, a complete loop, and then you, you start. They don't break down that often. You know, oh, okay. The, the, they're as good as, as anything else. It just it just eliminates the, the, the process of having someone there to commission it. Right, I'm with you. I'm with you. So, you know... But you've, I'm, got, to I'm, be, I'm you've, a, you've got to be a DIY person to do this sort of thing, haven't you? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, you've got to be a bit DIY mm. to do it. They're not hard to do. It just takes a little bit of, you know, a little bit of skill and a you know, good pair of hands in your way. A bit like okay. you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> do you enjoy your job? You're heating and all that. It's a dirty job, isn't it? You know... It is. I mean, I'm, I'm coming out of the building now and going back to work for a company just doing heating and boilers again. Right. I got fed up with doing the building. It's just too much hard work and too many problems. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I do. I mean, I've been doing it since I was 17. So, How old are you now? You know, 51. Oh, you're just a bit, a bit younger than me still. Yeah, I'm 54. So, yeah, yeah I think yeah, it's wonderful to be able to do that stuff. Did you go to university or any of that stuff? Well, no, I actually learned, uh, when my first uh, partner I, I got with when I was 17, her dad was uh, an old school plumber. So he showed he, you hands-on. He on. got me into it, and I learned, yeah, like on the old school, you know, on, on the tools. Yeah, yeah. And then I went from there, and then I done my gas course, my gas safe course, and I went from there, really. I thought but I want to go and do my air conditioning now, because it's um, quite a good little, good little thing to have a feather in your cap, you know, one of them. Right. And they're not that difficult, really. Well, I think it's, you know... It was when uh, Blair came in that he started pushing everyone to go to university. And I've said so many times while I'm doing this show, I can't think of anything worse than to have left school and then to have to go back again for three or four years. You know, at enormous expense. Enormous yeah, expense what they yeah. pay now. I mean, it would have been a waste of time me going because I was I never... Mean, most... Go on. I was saying most university people now, when they get... Uh, I've got a friend of mine who's a teacher... And yes. they just become a teacher and been for years. Cost them fifty thousand. Gosh, I I know that I know that because when I do the quiz on Wednesday nights, um, like tonight, it's just Wednesday now, isn't it? Um, there's cool. always groups of students in there, and I go round with a microphone. So how much do you owe at the moment? Forty thousand pounds. They're yeah, twenty two yeah. years old and they owe forty thousand pounds. And I, I just I can't get my head around that. I really can't. The bloke last night on the radio, I listened to Martin Collins on LBC. He's really good on there. Yeah, and, I um, to him quite a lot. He, he was saying, you know, to, to, to the young people, this is quite normal. They're not bothered by it. 
I mean, if I just come out of school and immediately I owed 40000 that would really bother me. I don't like a debt. I really no, don't it, like it. it but it, to them, it's it's quite a normal thing. Oh, well, I owe 40000 And they're not bothered. A lot of them don't seem to be bothered. Well, Strange, you know, I, I suppose if you're going to walk into a job of a six-figure salary, then it's not so bad. But if you're going to walk into a job that's, you know, only a £35,000 a year job, it's a lot of money to owe, isn't it? That's the other thing. I mean, how many of these jobs that the people going to university want are available? That's the other thing. Yeah. They can't all be. They can't all be going out and earning hundred thousand pound a year. They can't oh, Chris, be. It's, it's the um, unfortunately it's the way this country is. Well, you know, it's the one percent that benefit in this country. And yeah. everyone else. We're yeah. just like pawns on the chess table, my friend. Yeah. People need to wake up to the fact that um, you know the banking industry is sucking the straw. Oh well, we all know that, don't we? We yeah, no, absolutely. Oh, well. You've got to carry on. You've got to keep your chin up, and you know I've had it hard the last five years, but it's, you? Um, you just kept going. You did have to. You have to keep your head down. Did you? you know, did you? I did always you... think there's someone else worse off than me. Which there is. Obviously. Oh yeah. Did you have to take you on know, a bit of debt at all, or did you just cut back and stay I, with? Him? I had a lot of debt. I had you about did. thirty thousand pounds of debt. Wow. You know, and then I got wow. a divorce, and then my dad died, and then my mum died, and it was oh. just one thing after another. You know, but yeah. at the end of the day, you know, they, they, a lot of people don't understand. If you've got debt, you know, they can't take blood out of a stone. No, that's right. That's right. You know, and all these bailiffs that go around and do, you know, they, they say they can do this and that, and they can't. If you look up the, what your rights are, you know, the bailiffs have got no right to come in your house at all. Right. Do you, do you watch that yeah. programme, Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away? Yeah, that's just a, that's just a big sell, mate. It's is that just, just a TV show, it's, is it's, it, It's really? all TV show, yeah. It's just a big sell. Yeah. There's not one bailiff in the country that can knock on your door. Unless you invite them in, they've got no rights of entry into your I, house. But people I, don't know that. Don't I don't like... The, the the one I don't like on there in particular is a fat bloke with glasses. He's horrible, he is. I, I don't know... Oh, yeah, he doesn't work. He was um, mixed up in a few bits and pieces, when not he? all over Facebook. Oh, was he? Oh, really? Yeah. I like the old yeah, bloke. Yeah, there's a few of them that have been on there. I like the two old blokes. Um, yeah, they're quite... Yeah, they're quite, you know... There's Paul they and they do try to help. Yeah, those the two old blokes, and I think that might be an age thing as well. You see, whereas they are able to understand where people are, whereas the the younger blokes on there, you know, they're a bit, you know, a bit a cocky. Bit you know, right? I can do what I want type of thing, oh, and they're not really oh. interested in helping people. But then, see, then situations are different. Where you've got a, a private landlord, and they've taken you to high court and got high court writ, then they have got they have got the powers that they've got. But it's just the way they sort of portray it and come across to people, unfortunately. Yeah, the way they go about it, isn't it? Mm, mm. Well, an so absolute... you, you put on a pound? Eh? Oh, you put, put on, on a pound. pound, yeah. Disappointing. <laughs> Disappointing. And I don't, I don't know how. That's just it. She said that... that... I... Yeah, go on, sorry. She, she said that can happen sometimes. Yeah. Well, my weight's been going down and down. I was down to 15.3, and then I got on the scales tonight, and it sort of popped up to 15.5, and I'm like, what's going on here, Yes, only two pounds. Heard, yeah, I know, but it wasn't until I heard you say that, I thought, oh, maybe that's the reason, because I've stopped eating meat. Oh. Maybe it's in the weather, then. We've both gone up at the same time, my friend. Well, maybe. You never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Real pleasure to talk to you, sir, all right? And you, Chris, all the best. Yeah, you tell too. her, mate. Thanks for calling Thank in. Very bye, interesting. Bye-bye now. There we are. How lovely to talk to someone like that you haven't... Um, uh, spoken to on the phone. Isn't that fantastic? It really is. Call in if you want to. 0208 3477. A line has just become available. Um, uh, there we are. Just a second. Do, 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 do. Where are we going now? Um, yes, Julian says, I could do with some of your excess weight. You may know why. I do know why, Julian. I do know what. If I had a sharp enough knife here, I would cut some off and send it to you. And you could eat it and immediately put the weight back on again. <laughs> Funny enough about knives, I, I bought a new knife the other day from Waitrose. It was 14 quid. I, I, I've, I've got knives, but they're not very sharp. And now that I've started doing all my own cooking, rather than just needing a knife to, you know, slice around that plastic wrapper and shove it in the microwave, now I'm doing my own cooking. I need a sharp knife. So I went into the shop 
And I thought I'd get myself a set of knives. And they can't be that much. 130 quid! For a set of knives? 130 quid! So I just bought one. <laughs> 14 quid. It was 25% off. That's not bad, is it? 14 quid for a very sharp knife. I do wonder sometimes, when you buy that sort of thing from the supermarket, or wherever, when you buy a single knife, you know, do they think you're about to go out and do some damage to someone? <laughs> like in that film The Shining or something like that. <laughs> oh dear. Hello to Mark. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's at the karaoke. Which karaoke are you at tonight, Mark? You probably finished now. Would you have done at midnight? Karaoke finished tonight? I don't know, has it? Kareem, if you're still there, you can call in now if you want to. We're uh, available. Ricky was going to call in, but Guy says no. Why is that then? Ricky, you could have called in. Dear me. Guy's not happy because uh, we're giving a million pounds to the DUP. I thought it was a billion. It's not a bad, it's not a bad, bad price to pay for some votes, is it? A million pounds? Isn't it a billion? I'm sure it's a billion. Going back towards some of the um, older messages there, which... Uh, I've uh, I've not got to. Where how far down do I go? There we are. Uh, Simon says Nicholas Sturgeon has put some independent referendum plans temporarily on hold. Yeah, only temporarily, only temporarily. Uh, come back again. You know she start going on and on about it. Got to vote her out. Get rid of her. She gets on my nerves. She really does. Julian says horse horse dirt for roses is the best thing to do. I'm not going around shoveling horse dirt on my roses. Besides, I haven't got like loads of roses. My my garden is fairly ordinary, believe it or not. I don't like um, perfect grass and cut edges and all that. No, it's 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 a bit more like uh, uh, the, the the part where all the plants are is a bit like I, I I just see a space I put something in. It really is as simple like that. It is a billion, isn't it? I thought it was a bit a billion pounds for 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 fourteen votes, is it? <laughs> God's sake, cheap at half the price. That's what I say. All right, anyone else want to call in? Nice and quickly, because I'm going to clo close the phone lines very shortly, boys and girls. 020 3477 Staying on the subject of food. In uh, this morning's Daily Mail, it's been dubbed the first vegetable burger that sizzles and bleeds. <laughs> I mean, isn't that part of the reason you become vegetarian? Because you don't like to cut into a piece of food and see blood oozing out of it. Peter, do you, do you have blood oozing out your burgers in your restaurant? Oh, God. I mean, I must say, as as I, I'm a fairly tame vegetarian, by that I mean, you know, if I was to go into a restaurant and I asked for a veggie burger, it wouldn't bother me if it was cooked on the same hot plate as, as someone, as a normal burger. Do you know what I mean? Some of them are really strict about, oh, I'm not eating, uh, they won't even eat, you know, if you put, like, chips in the same boiling fat as you were doing fish, they won't eat them. Whereas it, that wouldn't bother me. Although I don't eat any fried food at the, uh, uh, anymore, at least not at the moment, anyway. You know, some of them, are, oh, oh what, what else have you cooked in that fat? Oh, well, we had chicken in it. Oh, no, I can't eat that. Now, that wouldn't bother me, so I'm not, strict in that way although if it's dead if it's dead and it's been walking around i don't eat it okay um anyway it's been dubbed the first vegetable burger that sizzles and bleeds and many say it could be the future of food now fast food fans across america are set to be able to try the radical beyond meat burger thanks to a deal with burger fi burger fi fi from july the 3rd it will launch in eight of Burger Five's 101 locations in Malibu, New York City, Plowkepsi, and, and various other places. Uh, the Beyond Burger, um, it says, just as a Beyond Burger is sold in grocery stores in the meat aisles, we knew it was important to serve it in menus alongside traditional beef burgers. And Burger Five will offer the Beyond Burger in two ways, a more traditional style burger with onions, pickles, lettuce, tomatoes and cheese, or a vegan green style, either wrapped in lettuce or served on a vegan bun. Oh, what is a vegan bun? I mean, what is a vegan... I don't know what a vegan bun is. Uh, the manufacturing technique, which uses peas, pea protein, has led to the firm being backed by tech billionaires like Bill Gates and bosses at Google. 
Uh, they just had a big fine, didn't they? Google. How much? How many billions? By the European Union? Oh, they're desperate for money. They're trying to cash in and get more money now because they're not getting as much longer. Um, yes, uh, it means plants can effectively be turned into convincing versions of beef or chicken. Interesting. There's a huge and growing appetite for alternatives to real meat because of animal welfare and health concerns. Now, that's the reason I became vegetarian. If you look on YouTube, and I would advise you not to do this perhaps before you go to bed, and type in factory farming, pigs, chickens, whatever you want, and you'll see it all on there. And that's what made me become vegetarian. That's the only reason. Nothing to do with fat or stuff like that. But you know a lot of the meat is also injected with um, antibiotics and that sort of thing. Last year, Beyond Meat began selling what it calls the world's first plant-based burger that looks, cooks and tastes like a fresh beef burger. I would eat one of these. I would have those. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, not, it's not animals, is it? It's peas. How do they do that? It looks very similar to a raw beef burger patty, but is built with pea protein and made to bleed using beetroot. Now, I don't understand why you have to get it to look like it's bleeding. Why do that? If you want to put beetroot in for a bit of a flavouring, then fair enough. But to just put that in so it looks like it's bleeding, is that, is that the attraction of eating meat now? I mean, even when I was eating, I used to have a steak and all that business, and it would be black by the time I finished cooking it. I couldn't bear the thought of cutting into a burger and having blood oozing out of it. Oh, it's just disgusting. <laughs> Not my cup of tea at all. Um... And it's got his advert there. Now eat your veggies means eat your burger. 100% plant-based Beyond Burger from Beyond Meat. American cheese, ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, lettuce, tomatoes, pickles. I mean, it sounds absolutely delicious. I will try. If I can find them here, I'll uh, I'll, I'll get one and try it. Um, Peter doesn't like the idea of bleeding vegetables. <laughs> Alan says, the only thing I don't eat is liver. Oh, it's that stuff stinks, doesn't it? How can anyone sit there and eat liver? Here, here's a little joke for you. If you like to play practical jokes on people, the next time one of your mates has got a bad stomach, go and get yourself a piece of liver or kidneys, chop them up, put them in the top of the... in small pieces, mind. Don't do big pieces or you'll destroy your toilet system. Put it in the... Um, in the in the tank that holds the water for the toilet, you know what's that called? The cistern, the cistern, and put the lid back on. They they flush the chain and look back down. They think that something terrible's happened to their insides. <laughs> oh, how awful! All right, gang, we're going to uh, wrap up here this evening. Uh, let's do. I think it's Thursday. It's Wednesday now, isn't it? So we got. Uh, we do. Third, we'll do Tuesday's birthdays as well and Wednesday's as well. Oh, we've got a couple of messages coming in there. Just a second. Uh, thank you, Julian. Is that I Will Survive there? What you got there? Uh, I Will Survive. Thank you, Julian. Let's just... Uh, Adam sent a message. Okay. Okie doke. Uh, from Adam, a uh, little message here from Adam. Could we wish Jerry Clark a happy birthday? Uh, I work with her in my day job. She is in my office manager and she's lovely. She's on your friends list. So you may have her on the list already. So happy birthday to Adam. I haven't read all of Wendy's email here, have I? <laughs> I've only read half of it. I'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, so happy birthday to Jerry Clark. Happy birthday, Jerry. I've remembered that one. Right, um, so Tuesday's birthdays. I'm saying, trying to find the things, right? It's all over the place, this now. Here we go. Tuesday's birthdays. Uh, Lewis Bannerman. Happy birthday uh, on Tuesday for Lewis. 
He had a, a bit of a party as well today, didn't you, as well? I hope your party went OK. Happy birthday, Lewis. He's always in Central Station along singing at the cab, uh, the uh, karaoke. He does. Come a chameleon and Gabrielle out of reach, don't you? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to uh, Jerry Clark for his birthday on Tuesday. Happy birthday, Jerry. Uh, David Saint. Happy birthday, David. James Cooper. Craig Pickup. Who have you picked up, Craig? Love your doggies. Look at those beautiful doggies behind you there. Happy birthday, Craig. David Murray, who I used to work with at a, a place in Clapham. Happy birthday, David. I've left the, I've left there now, by the way, after um after so many years. Happy birthday, David. Happy birthday to Simon Mayhew, who is was one of my top karaoke singers, my God, uh, 15 years ago at least now. And he's gone on to do great things. Uh, always see your little post there. Hope you're doing well, Simon uh, Mayhew, happy birthday today uh, on Ch for Tuesday. And today's birthdays, because it's Wednesday now, as it's gone 12 o'clock. Uh, Carl Waring today is 50 years old. He's been with the show for years, um, ever since it started, actually. When I first ever done a, a, a chat show on CMP Radio, which must be about 14 years ago now, something like that. Happy birthday to you, Carl, 50 years old today. Carl Edwards, happy birthday, Carl Edwards. And Daniel Taylor, happy birthday to you all. Let's sing you a little song, shall we? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. OK? You know what, I think if it's all right with you, Wendy, I'm going to save save this email for the uh, beginning of the next show. I can't believe I didn't... <laughs> I got halfway through the email and then stopped reading it out, didn't I? I went on to something else completely different. That's it for the show then uh, today. Uh, I'll probably be back with you Thursday now, I think. Or it might actually be Friday, because I've got something going on Thursday as well, unless I can get a show in quickly in the morning. Um, I might not be back with you now till Friday. So we'll see how we go, all right? Might be back Friday or, or possibly Thursday because we've covered both two days on this little programme. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed our brand new um, countdown. If you watch the show via YouTube, you won't see that. But if, if you've just kind of joined us late and you haven't seen the new countdown, that will appear um, within the next few minutes uh, on Facebook when we uh, when we go off air, all right? So enjoy your uh, Wednesday. Tonight being a Wednesday, I hope some of you will be able to join me for our quiz night at the King's Head Theatre Bar in Upper Street, Islington. Starts at 8.30 and finishes at 10.30. A nice £30 bar tab up for uh, grabs, all right? So once again, that's quiz night tonight and every Wednesday at the King's Head Theatre Bar in Upper Street, Islington, starting at 8.30 and finishing at 10.30. Good idea to ring ahead for a table, so not now because they'll be closed now, but uh, tomorrow morning when you get up, ring ahead and get yourself a table there, all right? Uh, have a nice evening, and thanks very much for joining and watching and listening to the show. See you soon. Bye-bye now.